good evening all uh, sorry for the delay so we'll start the session and i thought of discussing so many intensive topics uh, we we'll need a topic uh, which is the backbone of intensive care and we all know that without antibiotics uh, we cannot uh, run any pediatric hospital and including icus so, so we are so much dependent on them and uh, i feel still we lack understanding of the antibiotics and we'll just blindly follow the protocols uh, without understanding what is the uh, basic form of uh, pharmacodynamics pharmacokinetics and of antibiotics and what the rationale of prescribing antibiotics so i think uh, with this uh, um, session I, i hope i can make some uh, basic understanding about antibiotics for you all and still uh, after the uh, eight years in intensive care i'm still learning uh, how to uh, adjust antibiotics and uh, understand the antibiotics so some of this are from the guidelines some of this from my understanding and i try to make to simplify and there's a lot of theory aspect in this uh, don't think uh, it, i can run a case based discussion on this antibiotic so please bear with me and uh, if time not permits we'll do this session in uh, in uh, two uh, sessions uh, so we'll start so the main questions what i thought uh, before uh, uh, taking this topic is so everyone will feel that uh, about antibiotics so when to start an antibiotic so this is the commonest question uh, everyone will get so whether it's a viral uh, pharyngitis or it's a bacterial pharyngitis or the viral fever or a bacterial fever so whether to start antibiotic or to wait and watch this is a basic dilemma and for this i am not going to answer here because that that comes only with experience and the clinical medical clinical examination and risk taking behavior and close monitoring so these are the things we need uh, to take the dare enough decision to uh, not to give antibiotics so so for that we need a lot of clinical acumen and so that's not the topic of interest for today's so i'm going to skip that and uh, so next thing what i'm going to discuss is what antibiotic to be started so we decided to start antibiotic so what antibiotic to be started so that's for the first question will come on uh, come across for us and if we decide to give antibiotic so how to uh, administer so what is the dose and what is the duration and what is the uh, uh, frequency it's a uh, od bd tid qid so how to determine that thing and if you have started an antibiotic when to change it whether it could you want to escalate or de escalate or you want to stop the antibiotics and the most important thing is antibiotic stewardship antibiotic stewardship uh, the next important thing is uh, how to obtain blood cultures i feel without blood cultures uh, we cannot prescribe rational antibiotics so for rational antibiotics uh, prescription we need uh, at least good blood cultures where you can get the organism so with this objectives we'll move on to the topic and before starting the session uh, we'll have some small uh, interaction so how many of you feel uh, how many of you vote for the antibiotics uh, of choices in this particular scenarios uh, so you have a day 7 old neonate presented with poor feeding and activity you would did a clinical uh, investigations and uh, screening investigation crp was 110 and there's no clear focus of infection and so with this uh, scenarios what are the antibiotics of choice you're going to start Am I audible? Audible. Okay, because no one is answering. I thought I am not audible. Audible, audible sir. Audible. Yeah. Uh, can someone answer? So what are the antibiotics you are going to start? So day seven neonate with uh, clinical fields of sepsis and there is no clear cut focus. 
it's okay it's not an exam if you do mistake also no one is going to know who you are telling the answer so you can try and give a shot because this is a common scenario for which antibiotics will be prescribed in nicu you cannot run without antibiotics even though the child is very stable you are not you are going to start the antibiotics yeah pipeline sir for the eczema and amikacin sir for the eczema and amikacin someone answered peptaz and amikacin okay uh, so the person who answered piptaz and amikacin why you want to choose piptaz over cefotoxib uh, or we'll we'll go to the we'll go to, wait wait we'll go to the question to the other person who answered cefotoxib and amikacin what is the rationale for uh, giving cefotoxib and amikacin rationale is it can cross the uh, blood brain barrier can be crossed by cefotoxib so it can also act if meningitis is there so, as poor feeding and refusal uh, activity is poor but fibrinolin i think it doesn't causes the blood brain barrier so i would like to use cefotoxib okay why not other antibiotics why not vancomycin why not lenalidoxib why you want to choose only cefotoxib why not Sir, i think it should be like step, step up and uh, the step up therapy i mean in to when ship protocol i think we should go step by step no, sir so better to start a lower antibiotic and uh, then go up to upper antibiotic that's only vancomycin is not upper antibiotic it's a very narrow spectrum antibiotic your uh, methicillin so, yeah. resistant staphylococcus aureus when we are suspecting i think we can go for uh, exactly. that's what my uh, my uh, i want the answer so you need to decide on the antibiotic of choice based on the organism you are going to suspect is it right yes sir this is the first point everyone has to know so why i am starting an antibiotic is a different question so that that you need to go and uh, have to get experience and then but if you start going to start the antibiotic so first question is what is the organism i am going to cover with this antibiotic that is what the first question should arise the second question is as i rightly pointed out so pipta has less in his print probability that's why i want to choose cefotoxib correct so site of infection the focus of infection we should know before starting the antibiotic right like appropriate antibiotic so okay so next i'm going to question to venkatesh why you started piptaz over cefotoxib because uh, cefotoxib uh, has shown some resistance in the karnataka area exactly. like generally exactly that is the, the third question so third question is the local antibiogram so you need to have a data of your local antibiogram resistance pattern of the organism so you are covering organism. you all are covering gram negative only here you know one is targeting gram positive here yes many people are thinking so cefotoxib is the first choice for because their local pattern may be still cefotoxib is sensitive to the gram negative bacteria but your local pattern is resistant so obviously you are correct but the third point is you need to think about the site of infection also as the previous person rightly pointed out so you are suspecting cns infection so cns infection the data suggests that the piperacillin can penetrate but the problem is the tetrabacterium the tetrabacterium we don't have that much data convincing data for that so if your local data is suggest of it is resistant to cefotoxib you are suspecting meningitis so what are the drug of choice for your local uh, people now so piptaz is ruled out no i cannot say piptaz can completely rule out if you piptaz if you started piptaz gel is responding it's fine but i don't feel it's a ideal choice so you take out the piptaz from the option so what you're going to start when you suspect meningitis in seven day only unit when your local spectrum is meropenem meropenem is better to start i think meropenem exactly so i think i hope i am making some sense to all people what i am going to discuss so so whenever you want to start an antibiotic you need to think these many things into your brain it's not like simple protocol a unit protocol or so the, the person who is designing the unit protocol is going to think all these things so you need to think uh, before you are you are starting antibiotic so what is the organism what is the resistance pattern what is the site of infection so this many questions uh, apart from that so many other things are there it is not a three so this is three we commonly do but other things what you don't think are, are not aware so we'll going to discuss that them also so i think with this we'll move on to second one so the next question is is simple i think i, I will get the answers now so the bone unit on examination found to have tender erythematous swelling so there is a tender erythematous swelling in the scalp the same seven day neonate 
food feeding and activity crp was 110 but now we have a focus of tender earth matter swelling in the scalp so is there any change of antibiotics here or we will stick on to same cefotoxin amikacin or amiropin amikacin can go for the bill if you close okay someone is on a clock still why so what we are talking for the extra extra focus or yes sir super so with the tender arthritis filling so it's obviously it's a cellulitis bar abscess evolving abscess so the most common are is a gram positive things so even in neonate if you suspect abscess and uh, erythema uh, sorry cellulitis better to cover with gram positive because it, majority it going to be gram positive only if especially skin infections so so what is the antibiotic of choice uh, what are the antibiotics going to start here what about amoxicillin sir only uh, yeah ampicillin amcasin ampicillin amcasin no vancomycin Vancomycin, okay. It, it's not wrong. I can say it's not wrong. Clindamycin. Clindamycin also not wrong. But again, 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 it's about the local data. So, what is the incidence of resistant Staphylococcus aureus in your area that determines the drug of choice here again? So, if you remember, I say. Factor uh, MRSA incidence is uh, very high. Then there is no point of starting uh, clocsilin and uh, clindamycin. So you cannot take this. Thing. So there the drug of choice again is vancomycin. Then apart from that, because it's neonate, we cannot rule out gram-negative infection also. Some amount of gram-negative infection still can cause some uh, skin infections. So we still cannot rule out so gram-negative uh, add-on infection as well. So we cannot take risk of covering only with uh, gram-positive vancomycin. So sometimes you need to do an extra agent as well. So again, if you're suspecting meningitis, then again uh, the antibiotic goes towards uh, resistance pattern cefotoxim or meropinum. So that is what I feel. I, I this you can discuss a number of options here, but no one is going to wrong. No one is going to correct here. So, but uh, ideal thing is uh, depending on the uh, the list of the things what we discussed earlier. So local data, site of infection, and commonest bug which is causing this, and the previous encounters, and based on that, and we need to decide on how sick the child is. So this is also important. If the child is very stable, you can try the basic options, and you can step up always. But if the child is very sick and a shock was there, you cannot take that option. I will start with uh, um, augmentin or amoxiclav and uh, wait for one or two days and then decide uh, whether I can step up later. So, uh, so these are the different dilemmas we need to address when you are going to start the antibiotics. So keep it in the mind. We'll keep move on and we'll uh, elaborate the discussion later. So third question: one-year-old infant with cough, cold, respiratory distress, and bees. Does we need an antibiotic here? No, sir. It's a bronchiolitis, so better no yeah. rule of antibiotics. So we did a CRP for this child. CRP is came out as six twenty. So ideally, no need to do CRP. CRP came as sixty or seventy. No fever, sir. Fever, sir. There. I'll go with cefiroxim, sir. No, we want to start antibiotic. Can I just ask you? Yes, a secondary bacterial infection, so we can aid now. Secondary bacterial infection, fine. So virus cannot cause rhizal CRPs. It can. Yes. Exactly. So again, this is the clinical dilemma. So now with the uh, uh, adenovirus uh, being rampant, COVID, COVID so we are seeing like a CRP is a sky high. Yes, sir. So you cannot completely rule out a bacterial infection, or you cannot completely say the secondary bacterial infection by CRP is high. So again, it's clinical dilemma, clinical experience. So it's a matter of debate. So I'm not going to dig into it. So I just that's up to you whether you want to go to start antibiotic. No, you are uh, right. If you wait and watch for a couple of days, then also you are right. Until unless you have dared enough to monitor the child clinically, always you can uh, withhold the antibiotics and see. That is up to you. So then you have a uh, child with right lower lobe pneumonia with minimal distress. 
உயிர் ஒழிச்சையில் ரைட் லோவர் லோப் நிமோனியா வித் மினிமல் டிஸ்டன்ஸ் சோ நாட் நீடிங் ஆக்சிஜன் ஆல்சோ definitely we need to start sir okay what antibiotic uh, i need to cover with gram positive okay uh, so gram positive means what are the bugs you are targeting uh, step, uh, two years old kid Ste- streptococcus yeah streptococcus is majority then staff also you have to think yes okay so what is the drug of choice minimal distress not needing oxygen so what do you want to give i'll go with uh, peptides please peptides <laughs> okay amoxicillin exactly so that's why i'm telling you need to see the clinically as well clinical severity as well so if the child is uh, with minimal distress you can even send this child an oral antibiotic to home if he is feeding is okay and is fine not needing oxygen so with a minimal distress so my choice is oral antibiotic amoxicillin the child needing admission uh, then also i can go for iv augmentin and i will see for the response and can we test the sensor here uh, again but the problem is your local data if your streptococcus is resistant and if you already shown that augmentin is not working but even if if if, if you are starting plain amoxicillin here then um, you can choose cefraxone but if you are starting amoxiclav i feel uh, the both the core are safe so amoxicillin versus cefraxone i vote for cefraxone because resistance pattern is increasing and if you ask me for uh, augmentin versus cefraxone i'll choose augmentin because there is uh, uh, not much uh, uh, what chance can we take uh, by giving oral amoxiclav in uh, this child sir not like we'll take chance we'll Defin- take chance uh, definitely yeah uh, and uh, how long can we wait 48 hours 48 hours okay sir. any pneumonia should respond with 48 hours if this not responding with 48 hours the fever is not subsiding child clinically not improving definitely we'll respond that we take a decision based on the crp as well or only on the clinical scenario oh. no i will not think about crp and procalcitonin for giving iv or oral antibiotic but mainly based on clinical status if child yes. is able enough to take oral antibiotics there is no point of giving iv antibiotics even crp is 150 200 it especially holds good for streptococcus streptococcus your crp is 250 300 but if you give oral doxy for one day the crp will come down and fever will subside Okay. So what I'm telling is, your oral or IV antibiotics depends on severity and oral acceptance of the child, not depending on your CRPs and procalcitonin. So always go clinically, not on based on investigations. Okay, sir. Uh, so next thing is about if 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 a child is not responding, definitely you're going to step up based on uh, what are organism are you thinking and what are the symptoms pattern. Uh, so uh, second line antibiotics. So next child is five year old child is left ampoima. So what are you going to start? Clindamycin. Clindamycin. Cefraxone. Okay, what are you covering? Anaerobes. And staff. Staff. Anaerobes. That much calm anaerobes. Staff. Are the calmness starting for ampoima? Yeah, ma. It's streptococcus pneumonia. Streptococcus. Streptococcus, respiratory infection in child uh, 90% of times it is streptococcus. So you can have staff add on, but it's mainly streptococcus. So even in Empyema, the commonest cause is streptococcus. So staff is also common, but the uh, main uh, target is streptococcus. We cannot neglect staff here. Because it's ampa yuma, you cannot uh, because common start in streptococcus. Even it's ninety percent, and the detection percent only staff. So we not cover staff is it's not acceptable until unless you prove the organism streptococcus, you need to cover staff also. So streptoxone, okay, fine with clindamycin. Cefepime plus bencos. Cefepime, oh no, that's too much high kill. So, 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 so,
acceptable but the problem again the problem is how much uh, your uh, staff is uh, sensitive to penicillin uh, even clindamycin there is slight chance of resistance now so if it's mrsa and uh, your clindamycin resistance is also been going up so whether to take the risk of uh, opting for a lower antibiotic is again the dilemma so if you clinically child is very sick so i'm not going to take the chance so i'm going to hit it hardly with uh, uh, vancor yeah vancor definitely and the problem here is uh, the vancomycin activity again as mssa is less so if you are stable uh, if you still stable and you are suspecting staff you can do vancomycin but again and if still is sick and uh, still is in shock so uh, leaving only to vanco to take care of mssa if there is a chance of mssa is uh, is very risky so my choice here is uh, i can go for ceftriaxon if my staphylococcus is still sensitive for that or if child is very high risk and child is very sick i cannot go to take the chance there so i go to hit i go to think piptaz versus miropinam and uh, with uh, add on cloxacillin with vancomycin so always i can step down when the child is improves and uh, uh, get the culture pattern and sends to to uh, my lower antibiotics but again is a call safran is a bad option again no of safiraxin sir safiraxin so what you are covering with safiraxin mrsa स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस then definitely you can try sefrazim it can cover dual but when you are covering with the two antibiotics then there's no point of adding two sefrosporins there so we need to go for second thing so basically that no you people got my point what i am thinking here, uh, what my thought process here so my thought process here is i'm going to cover streptococcus i want to cover staphylococcus staphylococcus when child is sick i cannot differentiate mssa versus mrsa if child is stable i can go with vancomycin because mrsa is going up but if child is very sick i cannot a chance for leaving mssa because the coverage for mssa by vancomycin is less when compared to clogosilin so there i want to my choice for mssa is clogosilin straight forward i will start clogosilin and i will add vancomycin and if i got the culture then i will step down so that is what my thought process stable empyema unstable empyema unstable empyema we need to hit it hard stable empyema we can take a chance so lenozolate sir lenozolate is a option definitely if you want to start lenozolate i am 100% happy uh, the problem with lenozolate uh, again we need to discuss there's a point about bactericidal and back static yeah. so lenozolate is static bacteriostatic static so if the child is very sick i why will not prefer lenozolate if child is stable then i will do lenozolate over vancomycin lenozolate over vancomycin when child is stable okay what is the funda for this already we have discussed this thing in the previous unit meningitis Ish. Vancomycin cross crosses blood-brain barrier. No, no. For empyema, I am talking about. For empyema, lenozolate versus vancomycin. If stable, I am going to choose lenozolate, not vancomycin. Same concept. You are not there. Uh, right direction only. Here is a blood-brain barrier. It is respiratory penetrable. Local concentration. So respiratory penetrability is more with. Lenozolate, so that's why my choice is stable empyema. It is lenozolate. But if we, if the child is having shock, that means already the bloodstream infection was there. For bloodstream infection, I need a bactericidal drug than bactericidal drug. So there, I want to choose vancomycin. When the clinical child was stable and the bloodstream infection is part get rid of, then it's only covering part of lung. Then I will switch over to lenozolate. Okay. 
so that is what and the last thing so six month old child with uncomplicated uti complicated uti and neurosepsis is shock so we have three different scenarios of uti so what you are going to start here uncomplicated uti oral antibiotics can be given yeah what oral antibiotic that's what i am asking amoxiclav or cefixim any one organ okay so how many of your uh, utis are still sensitive to cefixim even uncomplicated does you people are getting cultures uh, reports of uti The culture saying that it is resistant to cefixim. Some are still responding with cefixim or oral cefixim clinically. Clinically, but I feel usually my cultures they are giving the tamoxifen sensitive rather than say cefixim. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm telling. I'm going to point out cefixim. Ninety-five to ninety to ninety-five percent of my cultures are resistant to cefixim. So I stopped using cefixim. my child here is uh, amoxiclav i want to give oral i will prefer sepran sepran is still sensitive for many bugs and uh, you can choose nitrofurantoin that is what my choice is for uncomplicated uti what is nitrofurantoin advisable in children sir definitely okay for um, okay. complicated uti sepran sir Okay, that's what question I'm asking. <laughs> so, how many of your bugs are still sensitive to aprazolam for UTI? So, uncomplicated cefixim is 95 percent resistant. So, the same holds good for your cefixim, sir. So, my data is 95 percent resistant to aprazolam. So, even simple E. coli is resistant to aprazolam. So, I don't think if my uh, if the local data is suggestive of aprazolam resistance. So no point of starting ceftriaxone. So you need to move up to upper. Either you can start IV augmentin. Fine, still you have a good uh, 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 scope for starting IV augmentin. But uh, for complicated UTI, better to start uh, higher antibiotics rather than self, uh, straight for ceftriaxone. So here the yeah, fifty thousand million other options. Or you have pinolones, glycosides. Uh, still they are still uh, sensitive so that are the options we have so uh, i want to preserve carbapenem strictly uh, not for utis i want to use it for a uh, bloodstream infection so i want to try to avoid uh, carbapenem here so i want to choose other options like uh, levofloxacin acetophloxacin uh, amikacin that are the better options if still the data is uh, showing uh, sensitive pattern for this drugs if your data is moving towards resistance Then again, uh, it, and again, it depends local antibiotic. So until unless you have local antibiotic, you cannot decide. But overall, the data and the worldwide, the UTIs are not uh, sensitive to cefriaxone. So that can that much I can I can uh, tell you. Even from the uh, community acquired UTIs, not hospital acquired UTIs. The same child complicated due to septic shock. So what you have to choose? Mirapen. Mirapen. Good. So you cannot take a risk here. No other option. So myopenem versus fiptas. Fiptas bactericidal. Myopenem versus fiptas. Why not fiptas? Or gram negative organs. Yeah, we are targeting gram negative only. Fiptas and myopenem cause both almost like identical spectrum. Now Klebsiella E. coli have resistant to fiptas also. No. We got, we got many. Yeah, one thing like if you, your local data is showing resistance, fine. But my data is still sensitive. Clipta uh, and meropina both are still sensitive. Like eighty percent clipta and ninety percent meropina, ten percent only chance. So still clipta can be used here. But the problem is the adult yeah. study uh, shown that very sick uh, uh, in uh, adults. So the pipta, uh, the mortality rate with the pipta is little bit higher than meropenem. So that's why in a bloodstream infection with the very sick children, still uh, we need to choose meropenem over pipta. Even the sense two pattern is there. Why is there mortality? That you have to do a study and tell me because I don't know. 
Yes. It's like those who are getting uh, pipitas, uh, they have a high chance of uh, dying. Yeah, more mortality for pipita versus fever. Okay. That is for adult studies. There is no pediatric studies on that. So we are extrapolating the data for adult studies. So shark, any killing shark, pipita versus miropinam. I choose miropinam. Even the sense to antibiotic, even culture is showing sense to pipita. So that is what uh, studies are showing. I hope I I give some basic introduction to what the uh, how to choose an antibiotic uh, uh, with this case scenarios. So we'll move on to some basic pharmacodynamics and uh, things. Uh, so what how to choose these antibiotics? So when you are doing when you are thinking about choice of antibiotics, there are six questions here. So what is the organ you are targeting, and what is the site of infection? So based on tissue penetrability, and what is your local prevalence of resistance? And whether it's a bacteria seedal or bacteria static, and if you have a susceptibility report, based on that we need to choose the antibiotic. And uh, whether you want to view IV or oral, based on the severity of the infection. So these are the six questions we need to ask yourself when you are deciding about starting an antibiotic. So these are the common antibiotics, and these are the common spectrums. And you can see here. Uh, penicillins are a little bit narrow spectrum, and second gen penicillin. So they are broadening the activity from uh, gram positive to gram negative. And if you move to third gen cephalosporin, they have more gram negative. And uh, if you have amino uh, penicillins and piperacillin, we add uh, penicillin as inhibitors, so they can have very broad spectrum, almost similar to your uh, uh, miropenem. So you can see here, except for this uh, uh, Neisseria, you have uh, same spectrum of fipronil to miropenem, and you have other groups like penicillins where they have even the broad spectrum. They can even cover gram-positive organisms, uh, and except that the MRSA, uh, they can cover all organisms. So uh, amino like acids, narrow spectrum, mainly for gram-negative, and other things like uh, like vancomycin and uh, clindamycin are mainly for gram-positive. Mainly for uh, MSS and MRSS. So another common thing is majority of the penicillins will have anaerobic coverage. Uh, penicillin group of drugs like cephalosporins and uh, carbapenems still have, and even with quinolones uh, like uh, second generation levofloxacin, uh, moxifloxacin, they have some extent of anaerobic coverage. So when you are thinking of uh, gram anaerobic bacteria, no need to add metronidazole when you are already covering with piptas and miropenem. That's the commonest mistake we are going to do. We we'll start meropen or amikacin, and we start suspect the NEC. We we'll add metronidazole. There's no point of adding metronidazole for NEC when you're already in meropen. So I think this this uh, spectrum of uh, antibiotic all of you people know. So I'm not going to stress here. We we'll move on quickly. So the so next thing is bacterial versus bacteriostatic. So when to choose bacterial? When to choose bacteriostatic? So bacteriostatic, you know, it's not going to kill the organism; it's going to inhibit the organism. Bacterial, they kill kill the organism. So for bacteriostatic drugs to act, they need host defenses. So they cannot act by themselves; they can inhibit the organism so that the host defenses can clear the organism. So if the host defenses are inadequate, like uh, you have immunodeficiency, you cannot give bacteriostatic drugs. And if your host defenses are impaired locally, like if you have endocarditis, vegetation, you can, host defense cannot penetrate it. And you have meningitis, endospinal fluid penetration of uh, this path, uh, like your host defenses will be less. So there you need to hit it with bactericidal drug than bacteriostatic drug. But for established situations, you can try bacteriostatic drugs. So inadequate host defenses are impaired host defenses locally. The third point is if your child is very sick, you know, if you get a shock scenario. So these are the three indications where you need to give bactericidal drugs over bacteriostatic drugs. And once the shock is improved and child is clinically stable, always you can switch over to bacteriostatic drugs. So, but in two indications, immunodeficiency and endocarditis and meningitis, uh, it's uh, better to continue. Uh, bactericidal drugs, then bacteriostatic, and once you complete the course, at least one to two weeks, then we can switch over to. When you want to switch over to oral, at that time we can switch over to uh, bacteriostatic drugs, preferably if they have good penetrability. 
So these are the common examples of bactericidal and bacteriostatic drugs. Bactericidal drugs, so mainly you are beta lactams. Beta lactams are bactericidal, vancomycin, aminoglycosides, fluoroquinolones, and metronidazole are bactericidal. And rest of all are bacteriostatic. Your linozole is bacteriostatic. Your tegisecond is bacteriostatic. So macrolides are bacteriostatic. So don't think they are the uh, choices when you have uh, high, um, like child is very sick and uh, in shock. So always cover with bactericidal drugs. So these are freely available in the net. I will share this uh, PPT also. Uh, don't worry about this thing. Don't memorize these things. Just keep them in the mind. Lactams and amino glycosides, fluoroquinolones, and bactericidal. The three groups you remember. And the next most important property for antibiotics: hydrophilic versus lipophilic. So why it is important? So because hydrophilic, uh, the problem with hydrophilics are they will have limited intracellular penetration, and they will have low volume of distribution. So they will not penetrate that much easily. And Dominant route of elimination is renal elimination. So, if you have any problem with your renal, you need to adjust the doses. The common examples of hydrophilic are beta lactam, amino glycos, and glycopeptides. And lipophilic, they will have high penetrability, large volume of distribution. It is mainly by hepatic metabolism. So, no need to adjust for renal uh, issues. But we need to adjust for hepatic uh, issue. So in very sick patients, you need to have this pharmacokinetic knowledge, very uh, inner knowledge should be have because there are two things will happen. So they can have AKA or they can have augmented renal clearance. So in augmented renal clearance in sepsis, you need to increase the dose. You cannot give the same dose as what you would give routinely for healthy individuals. So in severe sepsis, so when you have suspect augmented renal clearance, so augmented renal clearance, you can get the clue by your urea and creatine. If a urea creatine is very low, uh, well, less than the, uh, like it is in the low normal ranges, like 10, 15, that means it is augmented renal clearance. Or if urea creatine is high, obviously, you know, it is impaired renal clearance, you need to decrease the doses. Always check urea creatine when you are uh, dealing with severe sepsis children. So they can have AKA or they can have augmented renal clearance. If you think this augmented renal clearance, you need to adjust the dose, you need to step up the dose. Then the next one property is tissue penetrability. So in tissue penetrability, the thing you have to think is CNS. In CNS, the ideal antibiotic to penetrate the TACNS should be small, moderately lipophilic molecule with plasma protein binding. If they have high plasma protein binding, they should the serum. They cannot uh, penetrate the uh, blood brain barrier. And they should the efflux pumps, which are situated at the blood brain barrier. So based on these three properties, lenazolid, fluoroquinolones, metronidazole, fluconazole will have very high CSF concentrations, even in normal individuals. Even without meningitis, the CNS penetrability with these antibiotics is very high. And rest of all antibiotics, uh, apart from these four, they will have poor CNS penetration, including your meropenem, ceftriaxon, vancomycin, amikacin. All this will have poor CNS penetration. But the main advantage and why we are giving all these antibiotics in meningitis is the CNS inflammation will modify the penetrability. So it can improve. It can improve the penetrability by 10 to 20 times. So that's why they can achieve the therapeutic concentrations in the uh, CSF uh, in case of inflammation. There's no inflammation, are you giving steroids in uh, pyogenic meningitis? which will decrease the inflammation and the later on the printability will going to decrease. So we need to have a close watch on them. So for meningitis, we are having sephrodisone as empirical choice, both very and only in case of active inflammation, some amount of penetration, but that is not up levels. Even it's very less than the serum levels, but that is sufficient for the uh, back to the meningi meningitis. And the, as previously discussed, it's the main problem with the test of the piperacillin. Piperacillin has a similar spectrum of penetration in inflammation, but it's a tejo back to variable penetrability in inflammatory meningitis. So, uh, until we have a robust data, it's better to avoid piperacillin tejo back to when you suspect meningitis.
and coming to lung penetrability again it is a lipid soluble antibiotic uh, which will have high penetrability among the fluoroquinolones macrolides tetracyclines even linoleic saffron will have high penetrability and the routine antibodies what you will going to prescribe beta lactams polymyxins vancomycin amino glycosides will have less penetrability but if again if you have pneumonia and inflammation was there again the penetrability will go up so these are the things you need to keep in mind when you're choosing the antibiotic among the oral antibiotics amoxicillin will have better penetrability than ampicillin and other drugs so uh, try to use amoxicillin or other uh, 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 beta lactams when you're prescribing for uh, uh, pneumonia and next common thing is bone and joint penetrability Apart from metronidazole and cloxacillin, which has poor penetration to joint space, rest of all antibodies have good penetration to bone and joint. So there is no confusion here. So you can use whatever antibiotic you want. So the next most common thing is you need to discuss when you have a culture report. Yes, MIC. So we, so we till now we discussed about without culture uh, how to choose antibiotic uh, based on. what is the organism suspected what is the local prevalence data and what is the uh, uh, pharmacodynamics like uh, bactericidal or bacteriostatic or uh, lipophilic or hydrophilic based on its properties so we decided how to uh, how to choose the antibiotic now we have gotten uh, culture data we have culture report so how to modify so uh, the most important thing you need to uh, uh, know is what is mic so mic is a minimal uh, concentration of the antibiotic so that is going to inhibit the bacterial growth so what they do is they'll uh, suspend the back colony forming units of bacteria in an antibiotic disc and they'll see how much of the turbidity is there if the turbidity is very less that means the inhibit it is uh, inhibiting the if turbidity is more means it's not inhibiting well so based on this they'll give the mic values so disc diffusion method the commonly they do now they are taken over by vitex systems and uh, it is a measure of potency of antimicrobial drug if mic values are less that means if the antimicrobial is more potent but it's it's not going to be uh, as simple as that so we need to have other things also in mind when you are choosing uh, antibiotic the second thing is break point so break point is a cho uh, chosen concentration of antibiotic which defines whether species of bacteria is susceptible or resistant to the antibiotic so you are going to choose certain amount of uh, uh, certain concentration of antibiotic and tell that if this antibiotic mic is less than this then it is sensitive and more than this it is resistant so you need to compare mic with break point so break point uh, can tell so If your MIC is more than this, then it is resistant. If your MIC is less than this, uh, then it is sensitive. So, so MIC alone cannot tell here. So MIC with break point can tell that this antibiotic is sensitive or not. So if you, what we are going to do is, uh, if MIC, you need to uh, have a ratio. So break point by MIC value. It's called therapeutic index. uh so therapeutic index is break point by mic so which antibiotics will have highest therapeutic index that will have more chances of therapeutic better therapeutic outcome so in this example you can see this this, this column is the mic my mouse is moving see here this is the mic so you have different mic values and this is the break points and this is the sensitive break point this is the intermediate break point and this is the resistance break point in sensitive break point if uh, the mic value is less than this that means it's sensitive see here ceftazidim ceftazidim the mic is 2 and the break point is 8 so your mic is less than break point so it is sensitive and you come here chloramphenicol chloramphenicol the mic is 32 and stands to break point is 8 so it's not sensitive and the intermediate is 16 so it is not intermediate also and resistance is more than 32 so it's almost 32 so that's why chloramphenicol is labeled interpreted as resistant because the break point mic is 
almost equal to resistance break point and so can someone tell based on this therapeutic index what is the antibiotic of choice i'm going to uh, take here so you have uh, four five five six antibiotics which are sensitive so among the six antibiotics uh, uh, what antibiotic i have to choose here septaji based on your therapeutic index septaji septaji how you told septaji Sensitive. So, what is the therapeutic index of septaginate? Uh, eight by two. So, it is four for meropenem. Four by four, one. So, eight by eight by four, two. Sixteen by four, four. Okay. So, for levofloxacin. Ah, uh, off. Two. Off floxacin. Two by one. So, two. two. So minocycline four by two two. So in the order of priority, it is septaginin, levofloxacin, and minocycline, and the last one is meropenem. So based on your therapeutic index. I hope I am clear on this. Any doubts here? Everyone got this. It's very important. If you have a culture report. Your uh, antibiotic of choice will be decided based on therapeutic index. Therapeutic index is nothing but its its uh, breakpoint sensitivity by uh, MIC. So all these things will be given by microbiologist. You cannot remember all these things. So everything has to be given by microbiologist. If you don't get this uh, MIC breakpoints, there is a uh, uh, website called CLSI. So it is a European website where they will uh, give this breakpoints for individual organisms. This breakpoints is for individual organisms. It will going to change for Dolmoma. So it, this uh, breakpoints is not going to be same for every anti every organism. So for E. coli it is going to change. For Pseudomonas it is going to change. For Burkholz it is going to change. Uh, for Asinoid it is going to change. So this uh, MIC breakpoints will be keep on changing for each organism, and it will be given by international societies. There are international societies, UCAST and CLSA. CLSA is American, UCAST is uh, United uh, States uh, European guidelines. So they will be keep uh, checking this uh, since two ranges. So through various techniques, I don't going to go into deep into that. And uh, if you your microbiologist is going to give only MIC. You can walk on the UCAST and CLSI uh, website. You can search uh, these breakpoints for yourself, and you can choose what is the uh, antibiotic which has highest therapeutic index. So, since to breakpoint by MIC is the uh, thing uh, therapeutic index. Uh, if you have higher therapeutic index, you choose that antibiotic over the others. Sir, sir, my question is that. Yeah. The therapeutic index of meropenem is less compared to ceftazidim, but we are upgrading from ceftazidim to meropenem. What that's what I'm telling that that is you cannot upgrade from ceftazidim to meropenem because ceftazidim is not working. You need to think of other things. So there are so many the antibiotics not working. Whether it is, it is the same antibiotic, same antibiogram is still uh, holds good or uh, it's uh, the bug become resistant to ceftazidim now. That is what you need to think. So, septaginin is almost equal to meropenem. There is no point of upgrading to meropenem when th with this report. So, always you can think you can add because barcoleria can have a dual needs dual coverage. You can add it, but it's not going to that. Septaginin is weaker than uh, meropenem. If a, if your report has shown septaginin since two, it is not working. Means you have to think about development of resistance during the treatment course. So you need to think about that. You have to repeat the cultures. You need to look for the focus. If there are any abscess for the formal, they have endocarditis. Like the things you have to think of, you cannot think uh, meropenem superior or ceftazidim in this particular antibiotic report. But if you have a bug, you you suspected barcoleria, you started ceftazidim, and it's not responding, you can switch over to meropenem. When you don't have culture report, if if you don't have culture report and you are uh, suspecting barcoleria because your uh, unit is having barcoleria, high likely chance of barcoleria is a common organism, and you are giving already antibiotics, so your blood culture is uh, sterile, and still your actually is not responding. You can think that I can add meropenem. 
because it, uh, it, it might be resistant to suffering level in that say you can go but with this report you cannot uh, go, I, i can upgrade to mirror pinna no, that is not right no i'm clear on this if you have culture report no point of discussing first line second line third line activities if you have culture report on hand again chelist unstable battery level or battery state tissue penetrability these are three questions you need to ask if chain was very stable i want to send the chain on uh, chain to home what antibody can you see here chain is very stable i want to send the chain on to home proplaxin oral yeah oral levoflux i will choose that is proplaxin sir or oral even minocyclin but the side effect profile of minocyclin is higher than levofloxacin so i will choose levofloxacin i think i i i am making some sense here i am clear on my what my thought process is going on here if you have any doubts please stop here and ask me sir interpretation of ranges of mic there is a sensitivity intermediate is uh, sensitive and resistance uh, yes what that values depends upon sir that uh, that's what i'm telling that is given by international societies they are going to do certain techniques and they are going to choose this break points for individual organism we have in no say on that okay. whatever they give to you you need to follow that that's all that is by different techniques i am not going to enter into the depth of that if you want you go open you cast and clsi and read for yourself so that s i r values will be given by international societies individual organisms you want e coli you have different you want pseudomonas you have different you have mrsa you have different so that that values will be given by international societies based on different techniques sir these values are revised every year sir or how maybe 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 i am not sure maybe but they are going to give the data for every year so you need to open the recent uh, uh, year uh, documents not the old documents they are going to revise it definitely they are going to revise for every year and mic is the value which will be given by your microbiologist microbiologist so based on that if your microbiologist not giving our microbiologist good enough to give mic break points but if your microbiologist not giving break points you can go and search you open you cast and clsi you can search there so if you got an e coli uh, your microbiologist given mic values but they are not given break points you open uh, you cast and clsi you choose your break points from a different organisms like e coli you, you choose for septadidim the break point sensitivity is 4 intermediate is 8 resistant is 16 so here it is 8 16 32 <laughs> but for e coli for septadidim it is 4 8 and 16 and your mic is 4 there so you need to think like that okay for e coli my septadidim is borderline antibiotic because 4 by 4 is 1 i want to go for better antibiotic for mirobina the sensitivity is two. for e coli the sensitivity is 2 and mic is 4 so it becomes 2 by 4 no it becomes resistant resistant yes sir so you understand what i am telling here 4 and 4 it becomes sensitive for e coli it is 2 so mic is 4 and sensitivity is 2 so it becomes resistant so what i am telling is make it simple mic is the value given to you by your microbiologist break points are the values it's a international it is not national as it's international given by international societies like clsi and ucast you have no say on that values the only value what organism you are going to isolate and is uh, going to say is mic it cannot say break points it can only say to you is mic that also given by microbiologist So your organism is not going to tell you the break points. The break points is going to tell by internal societies. I hope I am clear on this. Yes, sir. Can we move on? Yes, sir. As we are running short of time, I think on the five minutes we are going to stop it, and rest of the discussion we will make in the next session. So what is the wrong here? If you identify this, I think I am going to stop the discussion. in this report what is wrong 
MIC breakpoints is 16 by 2. No, what, what you are telling? Which, which one you are telling? In this report, there is a wrong interpretation. The interpretation is wrong for one antibiotic. Please identify the antibiotic and let me know. That means you understand the concept of breakpoint MIC very well. Everyone, everyone has to think here. Go one by one. Be careful. Go one by one and look at it. Minocycline. Why minocycline? Because I, I marked it. <laughs> I am a sadist. So I want to mislead everyone. I will mark it. <laughs> uh, don't take it granted. <laughs> what is wrong with minocycline? Let me know. What, why, what made you, you think it's wrong? 4 by 2 normal. Yeah, it's sensitive only. Yeah, 2 is sensitive. And then what is the wrong interpretation there? So that's what I'm telling you. Oh, one by one. Astrionam. Astrionam, why? Astrionam, why? Why the interpretation is wrong? Yeah, you are correct. Why it is wrong? What should be their interpretation? Sensitivity should be there, no sir. 16 by 8. It's not sensitive. Sensitive. What is the breakpoint for sensitive? Eight. Intermediate is not Yeah, it should be intermediate. Intermediate. So understand what I am telling? For astronomy, it should be intermediate. Then, one more wrong is there. One more. Yes, astronomy it, it, is okay. It is uh, intermediate and resistant. It is okay. The brass blunder. Brass blunder. Yeah, what man? After uh, 15 minutes of extensive discussion. Miropinum. Yeah, miropinum. Why it is wrong? It is resistant. It's given sensitive. Exactly. So your sensitive breakpoint is less than one, but your MIC is four. The resistance breakpoint is 4, but still they give us sense 2. This is what you people has to learn from this class. Never ever believe your microbiologist. They are not superior to you. So many times blindly we will see the report interpretation RS, RS. Okay, yes, I am going to choose Miropinum. People got it what I am telling? Yes, so never ever trust any man. If you are going to trust, that is only you. So from today onwards, if you people get a culture report, I hope you know how to interpret the culture report. So if you are able to interpret the culture report correctly, I think my this one hour of my effort is fruitful. So remember what is MIC? What is breakpoint? How to interpret resistance, intermittent sense to depending on the breakpoints, and what is therapeutic index? And choose an antibiotic which has highest therapeutic index. Therapeutic index is sense to breakpoint by MIC. If you remember these four points, that is enough for today's class. Can we stop here? I think if you bombard more, another 30 slides are there. If I bombard more, you people forget what I told today also. Then this is a difficult topic and this is an extensive topic. Still, I am learning about antibiotics. So I cannot conclude it in two to three sessions. So I'm going to take time. So if people are interested, we'll continue in the next session as well. And I hope I am I have cleared some of your uh, thought process. Uh, stimulated some of people to go and read about antibiotics. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. If you have any doubts, you post in the group, we can discuss. If you want to share some uh, culture reports, we can discuss there also. Someone take an active lead, post some culture reports and uh, ask questions like what is the antibiotic we need to choose with the based on therapeutic index. If someone can take an active load, I'm very happy uh, because uh, many other times I'm going to be very busy.
say i'm not going to be busy with the patients i'm going to be with my children uh, so that's the main problem for me to take uh, post in the groups mm-hmm. it's great to free uh, someone can take this active role and uh, you can keep posting and we can discuss okay thank you all we'll come to the meeting